Hello and welcome to stage three here at the Ava Energy Women's Tour 2019. As the riders now make their way from Henley on Thames to Blenheim Palace and this relatively flat day in the saddle could result in a bunch sprint yet again as we saw yesterday when a very familiar face came to the fore. Stage two of the OVO Energy Women's Tour saw the peloton complete 25 laps of the Kent Cyclo Park. At just over 62 kilometres, it was the shortest day in the saddle and Canyon Shram's Eleanor Tacchini made an early attack. She got away briefly, but with the first iceberg sprint of the day fast approaching, the riders chasing bonus seconds for the GC soon reeled her in. Mariana Voss pipped Lizzie Dignan and Corinne Rivera to the line and picked up three bonus seconds. Sprint two came after lap 15, and it was Shayla Gutierrez Ruiz who crossed the line first to pick up the maximum bonus seconds. Corinne Rivera was once again in the thick of the action in second place. In the final iceberg sprint of the day, Leanne LaPere took the honours, but Lizzie Diagnum picked up another two bonus seconds. On the final lap, the peloton were all together and lining up for a bunch sprint. Diagnum tries to come through. Mariana Voss, though, the legend, the icon. Is she going to take it? Yes, she is. Mariana Voss. Big celebration from Voss. That win on stage two means that Mariana Voss is the new leader of the race. She has a nine second advantage over Lizzie Dagnan and Amy Peters, with Corinne Rivera, Sarah Roy and Lisa Brunel hot on their heels. Sarah Roy joins me this morning. How are you reflecting on yesterday? A good day in the saddle for you. Yeah, we're really happy with the result yesterday to get a third, um, a podium. Not that there was actually a podium, but um, yeah, third place is uh, it's really nice for us. We've been working on our sprint and um, trying to improve each day, so it was good. And what did you make of the element of having a circuit race? Because that's quite unique for the Over Energy Women's Tour. Yeah, it was a bit different to have a circuit race in the middle of a tour. But, um, you know, I think it's good to mix things up a little bit. And um, I had fun out there and it was fast and hopefully it um, was exciting to watch. How much do you enjoy coming over to Britain to race on these roads and in front of the crowds and the school kids? I really do love this event. It's definitely one of my most favourite um, events to come to. Uh, throughout the season just yeah with the crowds and what they do with the schools and getting the kids involved and um, it makes it it's so exciting for us and it's through the whole race as well you know not just at one point it's all a lot of different points throughout the race all the different villages and towns that we ride through and um, yeah it really makes it exciting for us. Well another team very excited to be out on the road this week are the only all British team in the peloton. <laughs> Now we've got a bit of a move here. This looks like Abby Mae Parkinson from Team Drops. I think yeah. that's one of the longest races I've done. She's got a brilliant move here. She went at a brilliant time and now she's able to ride on her own, uh, have her gels whenever she wants. She's got no stress of being in a hectic bunch. How much did you eat? Three gels, two rice cakes, a bar, a flapjack. This peloton behind it have got a serious amount of work to do to pull back Abby Mae. You couldn't have had a better first aid, I don't think, especially to be the only British team in the race. And Abby did such an amazing ride. I went off the front on day one. That kind of wasn't as planned, really, on my own. Riding through all the crowds, all like screaming, drops, 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 because they know that we are all British, really makes you press on the pedals and really makes you smile, actually. Like, I couldn't stop smiling going round. We really wanted to get the combativity award and we did and yeah the best British rider so we did everything we set out to do. We're feeling quite special but it's a bit of responsibility um, we wanted to make an impact showcase uh, our riders and our sponsors and our partners in the best way. The team had a really tough winter and um, I think it's just due to Bob's hard work and determination to get the team here that we are here. We were in a situation last year where we were seeking a new co-title sponsor uh, and a new bike partner. It was really stressful throughout the winter when we didn't know what was happening. And we were sort of just going from one email from Bob to the next, and we didn't know what was going on in between that. We got Cannondale on board uh, quite early in the process uh, for bike partner. We thought we'd secured another co-title sponsor. Unfortunately, um, that fell through at the very last minute. We then were resorted to either folding the team or to crowdfund the team. 
the British public all pulled together and yeah, all donated to a crowdfunding page. And then we had some individual sponsors as well that, that came on board. To see all the tweets and everyone, and even like young girls aspiring to, to do this for in the future, you know, they were putting their pocket money in to come and save the team and that is just great really, isn't it? The comments we got from people just to say that they were all supporting us and yeah, it makes a huge difference and it just makes us want to work harder. Yeah, we've set our standards pretty high for the rest of the week, but we're, we've come into this race off a really strong um, Turingen just two weeks ago. We have some really strong riders and it's great because we're all good at really different things. If we all just give 100%, that's all you can, that's all you can do. A brilliant atmosphere there within the squad. And for you, what's life like on the road with your team? Oh, we have so much fun out there together. Um, you know, there's a lot of laughs and, and laughing so much till you cry pretty much every day. <laughs> so yeah, it's really nice, really good crew. Um, yeah, good bunch of girls. We've been together for a few years now, so we know each other well. And um, I really like that we can switch on and off. So we know when we need to be on the ball and, um, and professional and um, on the job, and then um, we can switch off and have a lot of fun as well. And that fun must be really important when you're going day after day and it's so tough. Yeah, definitely. And I think maybe there's a little bit of an element for us being Australian as well and just being so far from home and away from our friends and family and our support network that we would normally have back home. Mm -hmm. And being here for nine months of the year in Europe and away from home, um, we become each other's family. So, yeah, it's really special and it's good for us. Well, last year, of course, you took the stage win on stage three. Um, talk us through today's profile. Is it another good opportunity for you? Yeah, it's an interesting profile. It's a little bit harder in the beginning of the race with two solid climbs quite early, like in the first 20k. Um, and then, um, yeah, it will settle down for a bit and it could be a bunch sprint, but uh, also a good opportunity for um, teams and, and people to get away in a break. So a lot of it will depend on who um, controls the bunch and whether the peloton lets, you know, a little break go away or not. So mm -hmm. we're, we're willing for both. Um, you know, we've got a good uh, opportunity for another sprint for me if, um, if it comes to that. And, um, but all of my teammates are so strong and really great opportunistic riders as well. So they'll be looking for a, a crack and a break too. Well, good luck out there today, thanks. Sarah. Thanks for joining us. And for now, let's take a closer look at exactly what is in store on the route profile for Stage 3. Setting off from Henley on Thames, the riders have to contend with two classified climbs very early on in Stage 3. Having negotiated the hills, there are sprints at Wallingford and Didcot before the peloton complete the 145.1 kilometres through Oxfordshire to finish at Blenheim Palace. Situated on the River Thames, Henley is one of the most beautiful English market towns with many interesting historical buildings. Best known for its annual Royal Regatta, Henley attracts some of the world's finest rowers. Visitors can enjoy a boat trip down the Regatta course and stop off at the town's award-winning river and rowing museum. Considered by many to be the real Downton Abbey, Blenheim Palace was built in the early 18th century as a gift from Queen Anne to the first Duke of Marlborough in thanks for his victory at the Battle of Blenheim. It's the only non-royal country house in England to hold the title of palace. Can you predict how today might play out with the profile? Yeah, it's supposed to be a sprint, but you never know because there is all twisty roads and nervous, so yeah, maybe some teams try to make a breakaway, but we have both senses in the team to, to have in the breakaway and also in the sprint, so let's see what's happened. I think today is an important day. Um, you know, to pay close attention. I think it could be quite an aggressive day today. Um, so it's important for the team just to stay focused, um, to, to look after Mariana, to look after the interests of the team, because we have um, more than one option, and then um, to take it day by day. Riders on the start here for stage three of the Over Energy Women's Tour from Henley on Thames to Blenheim Palace. 145.1 kilometers awaits them. And going into the stage, Mariana Voss in that green over energy leader's jersey. Yolene Dura in the pink breast cancer care points jersey. She's second in that classification behind Voss. 
Christine Majeris is wearing that uh, black Skoda Queen of the Mountains jersey. Corin Rivera there in that red Iceberg Sprint jersey. Lizzie Dignan in the blue jersey as the best British rider. Sarah Roy there in the yellow and black of Mitchelton Scott. Joe going into today's stage should be one for the sprinters again. But after yesterday, Mariana Voss, what a phenomenal victory. It really was a phenomenal victory. So Marianne Voss, incredible rider. I think 395 victories in her career in total across road and track and mountain biking and of course cyclocross. And yeah, another win for her yesterday. Um, it's a race that you would have thought would have been one for the pure sprinters, but she's such a strong all-rounder that she can win on any sort of course. So to see the delight in her face when she did win, it's, it was like it was her first ever bike race win, which I absolutely love seeing that. And, you know, she's a real crowd favorite, you know, a real sort of ambassador for the whole of women's cycling. And I think what we saw yesterday, that bike change just showed the cyclocross talent and also didn't need a lead out either. So as we roll out here from Henley on Thames, great to see all the school kids along the side of the road. Couple of climbs early on in the stage today, Joe. How do you think that's going to affect things? Well, it'd be interesting because we had no classified climbs yesterday in the circuit race. So that Queen of the Mountains jersey is still with Christine Majerus. But if she wants to defend that, the action's all going to come early on. I think the climbs are too early to really affect the outcome of the race finish because we've got a lot more flat as we go into the finish. So it could be one more for the sprinters. But the early climbs are, on, are an opportunity for a breakaway. But really, I think the girls that are going for that Queen of the Mountains classification need to be up there early on, need to have been well warmed up before the start of the stage, ready to race hard. So six and a half kilometers in, we're heading towards the first Skoda Queen of the Mountains point of the day. Pishil, which is 2.4 kilometers in length, average gradient of 2%. And at the moment, everyone just huddled together. They'll then go on to Brightwell Hill after this one. And just two iceberg sprints today. You can see Chantel Black on the right, just uh, leading out there for Bull Dolmans. Christine Majerus sitting behind her teammates. It looks like Bull Dolmans are going to try and lead this one out. Very compact group. Jasinska there on the back for Team Movistar. So at the moment, no breakaway attempts. And I've got to say, so far in this race, looking at Chantel Black, Amory Deirdrickson right behind her, they just know how to control race perfectly. They do. So Bowles Dolmans have got some real some super domestiques. When you've got the likes of Chantel Black, a previous world road race champion working for you, leading you out, you've got a super strong team, followed by Amelie Dixit, again, another previous world, world road race champion. So what a brilliant lead out there for Christy Majerus coming to this climb. When you get onto these sort of traditional English country roads, quite narrow, when you're in there, you know, it's quite hard to move up when the bunch is quite compact like this. It is really hard to move up. So all the DSs will be saying on the radio to their riders, move up, move up, move up. They'll be saying this on the build up into the climbs that everyone's of course got the exact same idea, but it's far easier said than done. And as the roads get even narrower like this, it is even harder. And I think a lot of riders often think the climb will be a good chance to move up. But um, if you have got the legs and you can sort of move through the bunch as it gets strong out, that can help. But really you need to be there before you enter the climb. So you're in the best position to go for those points. Yeah, indeed, Cassia Nuva I'm just seeing her towards the front now for Canyon Shram. Chloe Hosking as well is not far from the front for Ale Cipollini. You can see the uh, Ale Cipollini team in those fluorescent yellow, orange and black jerseys. Ellen Van Dyke on the left of your picture there for Trek Segafredo in that light blue, dark blue and white jersey. But at the moment, still all together going into the stage. Majerus with seven points, just two points ahead of Bertit Zolo and uh, with Abby May Parkinson with uh, four points in that classification. And a bit of a uh, mechanical hit, front wheel puncture for Shannon Malseed. So uh, again, for her, when the group's like this, she just needs to try and get that wheel changed and get it back on before the sprint starts for the summit. Yeah, so it's quite early in the stage. Or she'll be able to get uh, a quick wheel change and get back on. She might have a teammate drop back for her. She might not. It depends how hard the racing goes over this climb. There's never really an ideal point to get a puncture, but in general, you know, earlier in the stage, it's not so bad. So you can see now Team Vertu now moving up. Anuska Costa right on the wheel. Majerus reacts. A very gentle start to the climb. You can just see it's just gradually going up. Costa just moving up here into second wheel. Brody Chapman just behind her for uh, Team Tidco. Lottie Becker on the back here wearing 72 for uh, FDJ. And, uh, 
1930. Great couple of opening days that they've had in this race as the Team Tipco rider. We mentioned there, Brody Chapman, she's on the outside. And right on the back of the group again, the uh, Park Hotel Valkenburg riders. Demi Bollering, actually, rider from Park Hotel Valkenburg. She's had a great start to the season. As we get into some of the sort of hillier finishes, she's a rider, actually, that I think we need to watch. Definitely. So she was fifth at Flesh Malone this year, which I think probably surprised a lot of people. And as a team, they've had a really successful early season. Oh, problem here for Karim Rivera. So Rivera, as you see, dropping out the back of the group quite quickly there, looking for the team car. So we'll, uh, hopefully she'll make that back in quite easy. But for someone like Rivera, again, she won't panic. The team will be back to just pace her in. Yeah, she's got a very strong team in Team Sunweb, so she'll be able to get her mechanical sorted from the team car, have a word on the radio and have maybe one or two teammates drop back for her and pace her back nicely. So again, you just see the pace on in the front, just uh, the riders just knocking out the tempo on the back here. Ellie Dickinson moving up there in the white jersey for team drops. Again, they've had a good start to this race so far. And again, they see the rider just bouncing. This is uh, Alessa Viglia from uh, Valkar Silence. She's just bouncing on the wheel, sometimes just testing out the, the pressure sometimes. Sometimes you can feel like you've got a puncture and you haven't. Oh, you can. So some of the British roads do feel quite slow and quite heavy, especially if you're used to training somewhere like Spain where you've got lovely fast roads. You come to the UK and you, the roads just feel heavy and you can think, is something wrong with my bike? Have I got a puncture? Here we have a little attack now. Chapman now makes a move for Team Tipco. Just upping that pace. Everyone reacting behind. So this is the uh, really the first time we've seen the American team on the offensive here. And she's just opening up a small gap here. Costa just battling back there for Team Vertu there. Trying to bring Bertit Zolo into a strong position. Look at Majerus though in that black Skoda Queen of the Mountains jersey. So Brody Chapman just trying to uh, take some points here. This is a category two climb. So six points over the top. So no points yesterday. So still so many climbs to go in this race. If you can do what Brody Chapman's doing here and just try and sweep up some points, you know, you can really become a force to be reckoned with in this competition. You can, it's all to play for, and especially so early on, these points are going to make a huge amount of difference. And for a team to be able to take a jersey and go on the podium, you know, that, that's a real victory for them. There's all these competitions within the stage race, and they're all equally important. Um, and it's interesting also to see a rider from an American team go on the attack, because racing in America is so different to racing in Europe. You know, you've got big, wide, fast roads. Here we've got very narrow lanes, a lot of road furniture as well. So I know it can take a lot of the American teams a little bit of time to adjust to race in Europe but obviously this team here adjusting really well they are and just catching a glimpse on the back there wearing 141 Alice Cobb the young British rider had a chat with her before the start she's just battling some injuries at the moment is Alice Cobb she's a phenomenal climber she's just in front of our Pat Valkenberg rider there but Chapman just stretching this advantage now you can see this climb just starting to bite here and uh, Majerus did the right thing there just backed off yeah, so really strong attack here, but Majerus has got a strong team around her from Bowles Dolmans, and she's such a skillful bike rider as well. She knows how to follow the wheels and get herself in the right place at the right time, so absolutely don't discount her yet. Not at all. Now you can see that the bunch are just dr gradually dragging back the Team Tibco rider. Now Majerus, the Queen of the Mountains leader, comes up towards the front. Berta Zolo is right with her, and uh, just behind her, Cassia Nuvadoma, Sarah Roy up there as well, Fluorty Mackay just moves through as well, Abby Van Twisk moving up towards the front as well. So what we're seeing on this climb as well, even though they're early on in the stage, riders like Nuvia Doma, former general classification winners, keeping themselves out of trouble. Majerus though starts the sprint now for the summit. Berta Zolo is the rider that's right behind her. Nuvia Doma just crosses the summit there in third place. So there's riders behind. Now we're gonna start to get a few attacks. There's confirmation your results and Majerus takes five Bertrand Zolo takes the four points and, uh, that down to uh, Anna Plichter now next move going in here so Anna Plichter now makes a move here for Trek Sega Frodo so a good attack here from them this is a good move so perfect time to attack straight after the climb just when everyone's starting to recover and you make your move 
It is the perfect time to attack. So we saw some brilliant teamwork from Czech Segafredo yesterday, doing a really strong lead out for Lizzie Dagner at the finish of the stage, especially Alan Van Dyke doing a monster turn on the front. And here they obviously got the tactic today to send the rider away. That means the rest of the team can sit back, relax a little bit and not have to be the ones doing the chasing. Very early on in the day, though, as well, 135.6 kilometers in towards the finish. There's that situation. We've just seen a few riders get tailed off here. I was chatting to Abby May Parkinson before the start as well. When you're this far out, Abby May went late in the stage on day one, but you're starting to think, I just hope a few riders might come up to me. And Anna Plichter will be hoping for that as she now goes solo. Stage three of the Over Energy Women's Tour from the famous rowing town of Henley on Thames to Blenheim Palace, 145.1 kilometers. And our solo leader, Anna Plichter from Team Trek Sega Fredo, 50 second advantage that she's got over the peloton. And Joe, I think Anna, when she went over the top of Pish Hill, she was be hoping that a group would come up to her. It's a long, lonely day in the saddle out there in front like that. It is a very long way, and I think that would have been the ideal to have a small group together. But with this situation, with only a rider from Trek Segafredo up the, up the road, that means all the other teams need to think about, well, it's our responsibility to do some chasing here. Trek are the one team that can really relax and think, you know, we've got a rider up the front. We don't have to do anything anymore today. They were the ones doing the big, big lead out yesterday. But now they can relax with this girl up the road. So Plichton out, going through the start here of the Queen of the Mountains points, Brightwell Hill. One and a half kilometers, an average gradient of 9%. So uh, a category one, we're giving this. That means there's 10 points to the rider that goes over the summit of this one in the lead. So uh, she scored some points on the first one, could put herself well up there in the Queen of the Mountains competition with this one. Yeah, she could, and that puts the pressure on Bowles Dolmans as well because Christine Majerus has been looking, of course, really, really strong. Um, we didn't see a great deal of work from Bowles Dolmans yesterday coming into that lead up for that finish. So I think, um, obviously, with the stage victory on day one, Christine Majerus going for this competition as well, they'll have to be thinking, you know, are we happy just to go for the second point? So which I think will still give, them, give her plenty, um, but maximum points clearly going to go to this rider here. Anna Plechter, so Polish rider, 27 years old. So comes into this race again. We just had the Grazia Orlova race in the Czech Republic, put in a great performance in that one. Fourth in the general classification, took a second place in the time trial in that one. So that race in particular, along with uh, races Tour de Bretagne, the Turingen uh, stage race that we've just had, they're great sort of form builders to come into this one. They are, so a lot of riders will use these stage races as a really sort of good, hard block of training. You can never quite replicate um, race day when you're out training on your own. It's never quite the same. Add into that the, the bunch skills with the big peloton and everything else. It is, it is the best way to train, really, as a road rider. It is indeed. So, again, as you see, a good performance in the time trial there. You'd, you'd love a time trial in this one, I would say. I would. I think that's the one thing this race is missing. We've got longer and hillier stages. We've had a circuit race yesterday. I'd love to see a time trial or a team time trial. I think that'd be popular among riders as well. A lot of the team sponsors, a lot of the bike companies invest a lot into their aero kit and it is a great way to showcase that equipment. Indeed, maybe a team time trial. I'd like to see that one. The peloton can see Anna Plichter just ahead. So as uh, Joe said, it takes the pressure off and you can see the climb just starting to kick up here. Just uh, now you can see why it's, as it gets steeper as the climb goes on, why it's getting that category one status. So the peloton have her in their sights. Well, uh, she managed to extend her lead over the top of this one again. Quite narrow here on the, this climb. No opportunities for the riders to move up. So remember, Christine Majerus, the leader in that uh, Queen of the Mountains competition, is already uh, building a good advantage in this one. So it took uh, six points over the top of the Category 2 climb that we had just before this one. And I think a lot of riders, when they come to uh, Great Britain, they, they find that the little climbs all the time it really really hurts your legs doesn't it it's not like we, we're not really like other countries where we have long sections it's either up and down all day in a way yeah well we haven't got the Alps we haven't got the Pyrenees but we do have 
this rolling countryside, which I think it's easy to perceive that it's flat, but it's definitely not flat at all. You're up and down all day. It's really wearing on the legs. It can often be a real sort of race of attrition with a lot of action happening further down the bunch of riders getting dropped. And if you, if you are placed further back, you have to come round people. So it is very hard work and it is very hard racing here in the UK. So Plikta just starting to see that summit ahead of her back to the peloton. You can see all the riders out the saddle at the back here. Good crowds ahead of the Trek Sega Fredo rider as they head up towards the summit. Had a chat with her teammate Elisa Longa Borghini before the start. It was quite surprising when you chat to a lot of the riders of the uh, reaction to the circuit race yesterday. It was so unusual for them. And uh, Elisa in particular is so impressed with that Kent Cyclopark. I think she's going to try and uh, campaign for one to be built in Italy. Yeah, well, it was a great showcase for that facility. And it, it, it is a great facility. And I'd love to see more of them throughout the UK. I think we could do with a few more up north, to be honest, because it is probably the best way to, to develop bike handling skills for anyone at any level, but also particularly for young people, for novices of any age as well, that want to get into cycling, but aren't quite ready to go out on the road just yet. It's absolutely brilliant facility. So I'm glad we could showcase it here. Anna Plichter now crests the summit, just takes a big gulp, takes 10 points in the Queen of the Mountains competition. Great to see so many people out on this one, but it's going to be the battle behind who's going to take those all important second place points. So 10 points down to one for 10th place. Majerus will be looking to try and battle it out. We'll see if Bertard Zolo has got the uh, the legs to challenge in this one. Roxanne Kanetaman just starting to drift off the back of that. She'll battle to get over the summit. Back to the next riders, and it's Majerus that leads Anuvia Doma over the top of uh, that one so uh, Christine Majerus again more points scored quite interested today to see Cassia Nuva Domo starting to move up towards the front challenge for these Queen of the Mountains points she almost looks like she's looking for that point to try and go on the offensive she is so we know she likes to race aggressively of course she's won this stage race before as well but we know she is really well known for being a very strong climber and we know this edition of the race is probably the hilliest they've had but by quite a long way with all the hills to come in the last three days of racing really so this is a chance for her to test her legs see how she's feeling see how she's climbing compared to the other climbers in the race even if she isn't going for this queen of the mountains competition it is a really good test for her still we're inside one kilometer to go to the first iceberg sprint of the day in wallingford so remember three two and one seconds 45 seconds is your gap from your lone leader and afflictor of trek sega frodo back to a team of Virtu led peloton and Nuska Costa was the rider that was on the front through those bonus seconds all important and now team WNT move through towards the front Elisa Brenauer you can see there sat in third wheel and uh, today Joe just two intermediate sprints we've had three sprints on the both of the uh, opening stages we have, so I think the intermediate sprints really dictated the race yesterday because there wasn't any climbs, it was a circuit race, and you had three chances within the race for those bonus seconds and points, and I think that's what the big teams really focused on. Today there's a lot more happening, but once again, all the teams lining up for their leaders and racing full gas for this sprint coming up. Anna Plichter now rides through here. She'll take the maximum three points and three bonus seconds. Then all the kids out their English and maths lesson much more important to watch the bike race back to the sprint now for second place we just caught a glimpse of that green jersey of Mariana Voss Brenauer is there Lizzie Dignan in that blue jersey as the best British rider Abby May Parkinson getting up here as well we just caught a glimpse as well of Corin Rivera in that red iceberg sprints jersey now Mariana Voss lines up for the sprint it's between her and Rivera on the line so Mariana Voss has a look across at Corin Rivera. We'll wait for confirmation of uh, that one. But our lone leader still trying to build her advantage here. We had four previous winners of the race there, racing full gas for second and third in that sprint. We had Lizzie Diagnan, Marianne Voss, Corinne Rivera, all going for it, and Lisa Brenau as well. There you have confirmation of your sprints. Anna Flickter takes it from Corin Rivera with Mariana Voss taking that one bonus second. Moving on to our second sprint of the day. We're almost into Didcot now. Our lone leader 
So building that advantage over the peloton behind and not really giving her much rope though at the moment. Back to the peloton behind and Voss and the teammates on the right of your picture. Oh, big crash there right in front of Mariana Voss. The lead out train of Voss and you can see the teammates shouting into the radio there. You just saw a teammate right in front of our green jersey and a big crash going down on the side and this has really split the peloton on that crash was right across the road there so we've got you know just a small percentage of the peloton still racing now for this next sprint but that crash affected a lot of riders have a look so the teammate of Voss loses it in front of her uh, team leader Voss goes down all oh, quite heavily just into that sign at the side of the road as well all across you can see riders on both sides of the road there so uh, we'll try and bring you some news on that as soon as we get it. The uh, riders, of course, still carrying on here for the intermediate sprint. Our lone leader, again, completely as she would be oblivious to what's gone on behind her team. WNT leading out for Lisa Brenauer. So Anna Plichter now riding up towards the line. So uh, she would be unchallenged in this one. She took three bonus seconds on the first intermediate sprint of the day. She takes another three there. She went in today uh, 45 seconds down in 76th overall. And uh, behind Lisa Brenauer just having a bit of a chat with the teammates. It's a very difficult situation this, and you can see now that the race director uh, has got the flag out. It looks like he's now neutralizing the race. So he's just the uh, race director's car in front of the riders. Plichter has been informed. So it looks like at the moment, Joe, they're going to neutralize the race. Yeah, that was a huge crash affecting so many riders. Of course, the race leader as well, Marianne Voss, in that green over energy jersey, which was a huge shame for her. But clearly, the race directors decided here to neutralize the race, make sure all the riders get the appropriate medical attention that they need. So Anna Plichter here, our leader, has been stopped. So when they do restart the race, I'm sure she'll be given the lead that she had before the race was neutralized. But uh, rider safety, of course, by far the most important thing right now. Is indeed Mick Bennett there, just out of the car, just having a word with Anna Plichter, just asking her if uh, she needs a jacket to keep warm. The riders are behind. That's uh, the neutral service car. Just coming up here, the race just halted for the moment. We will be underway as soon as the riders behind have been attended to. After the race was neutralized, approaching the second sprint in Didcot, which affected a large number of the peloton, the race was restarted with leader Anna Plichter's gap intact. However, the Trek Sega Fredo rider was reeled in by the peloton with approximately 40 kilometers still to race. The crash affected a great number of riders. Nine had to abandon, including Ovo Energy green jersey wearer Mariana Voss and two of her teammates, along with three members of Team Vertu and Trixie Warak of Trek Sega Fredo. The race was all together as we headed into the finish in the grounds of the historic Blenheim Palace. Ellen van Dyke on the front, Elisa Longa Borghini on the wheel, Lizzie Dignan moving up there in that blue, best British rider. Watch out for that come the finish. Team Sunweb getting up there. There's Lisa Bren out in the centre of your picture. Joe, this job, the lead out. The riders like Ellen Van Dyke, they make it look easy. This is It's the sort of job that teams love you to do. It takes a lot of organisation. It does. So your first lead out rider, what Ellen Van Dyke's doing here, needs to be a really strong rider, normally a sort of time trial type rider that can get on the front and just go hard for, for a long time. And as your riders go further back in your lead out train, you'll have riders with a bit more of a jump or a bit more of a kick on them, and they'll be the last ones to lead out and unleash that sprinter. So your practice lead out trains in training, on training camps, which is quite straightforward when you've got a quiet road and you can easily get yourself organized and in line and do it all perfectly. On race day, it's quite different. It takes a bit of organization to get your riders at the front at the right time. You normally have a race captain on the road, so a rider in your team is nominated to sort of communicate with the other girls in the peloton. You'll, of course, have your DS on the radio as well, but ultimately, the most decisions are made on the road because because it's the point of view of the riders that have got the best perspective of the bike race. And you're seeing Christine Majerus now moving up in that uh, Queen of the Mountains jersey because 
You see the way it's easy on a straight road as well, but when you're going left and right all the time, it's quite easy for a lead out train just to get washed away. And then you've got to do the job all over again. It's almost like a washing machine out there sometimes. Yeah, exactly. So the harder you're going, the more you've got the peloton strung out, the harder it is for anyone else to, to break into your train and set up their own train. So basically, if you've got that first person really stringing the bunch out, no one else can do anything about it. But we can see here a few other teams. So Bowles Dolmans now have got Christine Majerus and two other riders there. Uh, of course, Shoni Dor, winner of day one of this stage race. So she'll be fancying herself for a sprint today. Indeed, watch out for her in that pink Breast Cancer Care points jersey. She's got Amy Peters right in front of her. We're seeing the Mitchelton Scott team as well coming up in the yellow and black. Five kilometers to go now in towards the finish in Blenheim Palace. We've got this uh, right-hand bend with about 500 meters to go. So positioning into that final corner is really going to be key in this sprint. It will be. So riders will have studied the road but before the race and had a little look at what sort of finish they've got coming. Of course, we had the complete opposite yesterday where we had many, many laps of the same circuit and multiple sprints on the line. So there's plenty of chance to practice your lead out, get organised, know what gear you want to be sprinting in, know what side of the road you want to take, know what line you want to take on the corner. But it's completely different when you're coming into a finish not having seen it before. So these girls here will have studied the road book, like I said, but ultimately it's on the road at the time they need to make those quick decisions to know exactly what line to take and when to go. So we're just going round the grounds of Blenheim Palace now, a very famous venue, one of the uh, country's most popular triathlons that people love to participate in. And riders down the back here, just sort of heading in towards the finish. So sprint day here, we've got a bit of a hilltop finish to come tomorrow, and then we get into our final two days. So. The riders, Jolene Dura, the, the sprinters, Chloe Hosking, they're really going to be looking to try and get this stage victory today. Yeah, so this stage is really a sort of race of two halves. We've had the first three days, which on paper look to be to be flatter and should be more favouring the sprinters. This is the last one of those today. And then we've got three hillier stages. So any teams with a strong sprint will be thinking we need to take advantage of these first three days of racing. So, so far, we've had a win for Marianne Voss and a win for Jolene Dor, but everyone else is thinking, well, if we've got a sprinter, today's our last chance, really. Oh, rider going down on the right. So just getting caught there. Now in towards the final few kilometers now, Amelie Deirdrickson, you can see on the left in that Danish champions jersey, the red and white. Abby May Parkinson again for Team Drops is well to the front of this one. Van Dyke and T Team Trek Sega Fredo just keeping things on the right hand side. Lisa Brenner just trying to get Team WNT organized. Here come Canyon Shram as well. Hannah Barnes up towards the front. They've got Eleanor Cicchini. So again, there's only so much room on this road. Every single team here wants to try and lead out their sprinter. Yeah, we've got probably three teams here quite key at the front. WNT, Canyon Shram, Trek Segafredo there as well. Everyone trying to get themselves organized, trying to get themselves in control of this race. Lizzie Dignan must be feeling good. She must have had a word with her teammates saying, I really quite fancy this finish today. But Bowles Dolman's on the left also trying to get involved. Katrin Hammers now bringing Lisa Brenauer up towards the front. She's having one of the best seasons ever coming into this race. Off the overall victory in the Turingen race. Shake of the head though for Lisa. Lisa Brenauer looks like she's now going to have to freelance this sprint. Because yesterday, we think back to the stage victory of Mariana Voss. Some riders, they don't need the riders in front of them to lead them out. They just kind of surf everyone else's lead outs and find their own way through. Yeah, absolutely. So a good sprinter is brilliant if you have got a really strong lead out train. But similarly, if you can get on the right wheels, get yourself in the right position in the peloton, you can still have a brilliant result. And we saw that exact thing from Marianne Vosch yesterday. You know, she's a supremely talented rider, knows exactly what she's doing in that bunch. And you'll see other riders doing similar things as well. Marta Cavalli now in that light blue jersey. She's the Italian champion. She's also the best young rider in the Women's World Tour this season. That's why she's wearing that blue jersey. Jersey. She's bringing her teammate Maria Giulia Confalonieri through in the pink and blue of Team Valka. Two kilometers to go. It's still Advantage Canyon Shram at the front. Hannah Barnes doing a great job leading this one out. 
We saw Sunweb on the right as well getting themselves organised. We could see them there. So Karim Mavera, of course, their sprinter, been very active right from the start of this race two days ago. So, of course, she'll be looking for a stage victory as well. And here come drops on the right. Ellie Dickinson and Abby May Parkinson. Again, the British team. And uh, Ellie Dickinson, phenomenal track rider is Ellie Dickinson. She's a team pursuit rider for the British national team. And look at the power now of Ellie Dickinson. She's a phenomenal Omnium rider on the track. Track. So this is great to see team drops. Abby May Parkinson, as we said, she got caught with two kilometers to go on the opening day. Perhaps now Abby May got designs on this race overall. Exactly. So incredible ride here by Ellie Dickinson getting herself to the front of this bike race at this stage. You know, still a relatively young rider and predominantly a track rider, but doing a lot of work there for Abby May. Kasia Nuvadoma now in the centre, one kilometre to go up towards the line. The Canyon Stram rider, the winner of the Amstel Gold Race this year and a similar kind of move to this one that she's making. She takes advantage of every little rise that she can. Former winner of this race, we're seeing Sarah Roy up there in the yellow and black of Mitchelton Scott. Chloe Hosking is also through towards the front, another Australian sprinter. Nuvia Doma has a look round now. Amy Peters switches over, now it's the ball. Dolman's rider in the orange and black that moves through towards the front. We've not got much organisation now, so there's Amy Peters there with Jolene Dore, but lots of riders in ones and twos with no real clear lead out train anymore. This is our right hand Ben that's going to take us up towards the finish. We'll see out of this corner who has advantage over the front. 500 metres to go. The historic Blenheim Palace down the distance. There's Sarah Roy for Mitchelton Scott now trying to go on the right. Amy Peters is there. Lisa Brenauer now in the red and blue from WNT. And Yoli Endura is right there in that pink jersey now. They line up for the finish between Brenauer and Dora. Dora takes her second stage victory of this race. Lisa Brenauer let it out, but it goes to Yoli Endura. Wow, a brilliant sprint there by Jolene Dor. Fantastic teamwork again from Bols Dormer. She had the perfect lead out there from Amy Peters. Quite a chaotic finish there, but once again, she comes out on top. Celebrations all round for Bols Dormer's. Another stage victory for Jolene Dora. Jolene Dora takes the win on stage three. Lisa Brunau was second ahead of Demi Bollering in third. Roxanne Fournier fourth, Sarah Roy in fifth, and Lizzie Deignan came in sixth. Yolin Dura celebrates her second stage victory on this year's tour following her win on the opening day. It was a pretty hectic race today and also with a big crash uh, and they neutralized, um, yeah, they neutralized the race. And so it was a bit, I don't know, a bit strange today, but uh, yeah, happy with the win, of course. Christine Majera strengthened her hold on the Skoda Queen of the Mountains jersey. Corin Rivera still leads in the Iceberg Sprints competition. The Wahooligan Combativity Award went to Anna Plichter for her long solo attack. But for CCC Live, it was a very bad day. Before the intermediate sprint, the um, team was doing a lead out for uh, Mariana and um, Jeanne hit a big pothole and she lost her handlebars and Mariana was sitting her wheel um, and so she went down. I actually landed pretty much on top of the crash, so I, I wasn't too badly affected, but it was really unsettling. All that I do know now is that everything's under control and that she's okay. And um, yeah, Jana hit her head pretty hard. She actually wanted to, to start again, but um, the team convinced her not to. And, and then Valerie um, was ribs, so yeah. With Mariana Voss crashing out, Lisa Brenner has taken possession of the green jersey as leader of the Ovo Energy Women's Tour. So after stage three, Lisa Brenau leads Corin Rivera by three seconds with Lizzie Deignan and Amy Peters just one second back. Sarah Roy is at six seconds off the lead and Yoli Endura is at eight seconds. Well now in the Ovo Energy Green Leaders jersey, Lisa joins me now. Talk us through a somewhat eventful day, but you've had a tremendous three days on the road seeing you in this jersey. Yeah, um, I uh, got second in the stage today and um, third on the first stage. So uh, with uh, some bonus seconds, I'm now the GC leader. And um, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, but also it is a bit the downside because we had a, a crash in this stage. And um, unfortunately, the 
the race leader had to drop out of the race and so it feels also a bit weird to be the leader now. Things like that unfortunately happen and I want to wish all the best to the riders who crashed today. Yeah, something we never, never want to see. And just quickly, looking to tomorrow's stage, what are your expectations? Yeah, tomorrow is going to be the longest stage of the tour and um, yeah, now I'm in the leader's jersey, so uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be lots of work for me and my teammates, and I hope that I can maybe take some intermediate sprint seconds as well and uh, try to defend this jersey. But first of all, I think we are happy and uh, we're going to go there for guest tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining us today and join us once again tomorrow at the same time for all the action from Stage 4.